Good morning, everyone, and on today's episode of Pinchel's Garage, we are working on Filberto, the Mark IV GTI. And today we're going to be installing a shift box from Cooler Work. This guy right here. Now, if you guys don't know how to install one of these, guess what? We're going to learn how to do it today. Now, what I've done already ahead of time, just to save about 20 minutes of filming, is already removed my exhaust and the aluminum uh, heat shield that goes underneath that covers the uh, the actual shift box from the bottom. Uh, the reason why I did this because it's very time consuming and that solves a lot of time for us. We're going to get to installing this much quicker than than, uh, than expected which is really nice because I already have a DIY and how to install an actual uh, and service the shift box and so look that up on my channel. Here we're going to be doing this bad boy and I'm super, super excited for this because this is going to drop my shifts to substantial and add an extra little cool factor. I mean, this thing's pretty freaking dope. Can't go wrong with this. And again, from CoolerWorks.com. So we're here now and we're going to be working on the inside to get our shifter out. Now to do that we have to remove our pretty much our back stuff here and for me to do that I got a couple things that I got to unbolt that are a little extra than normal. Um, let's see here. Good. Since I have like a, my air con my air ride control for the back of the car is here, I gotta take that off. This will allow me to pull this open because I have to pull the shift um, right here. I guess you can see this. I have to be able to pull this out. foam here you can see here's the foam that has to come out as well this stuff is usually a pain in the butt it's gonna work it I'm gonna see right now if I need to take everything out So, foam is removed. Now, there's two 13 mils back here. There's two of them. Uh, one on the left, one on the right. That's pretty much holding the rest of the shifter assembly in place. So, I'm going to see if I unbolt that and take this off. And it should let me pretty much remove all of this. I want to reuse uh, my shift knob for my uh, for my my other um, shifter. <laughs> I'm like losing, not thinking right now. Um, so that's where I'm at right now at the moment. So let's go from there. Now to get this guy out without like causing too much of a headache um, you can pull your ashtray up and out and it should give you access right above for your 213s right there since my uh, my whole entire center console has been beat for years and years it's pretty broken <laughs> 
We're just going to try to hot glue it once. But those are the two 13s we want to get right there. So now that we uh, unbolted pretty much the shift box all the way, let's see here. Now, I did the other two 13s earlier underneath. Because again, we've done this video already. So all I'm trying to do is get you guys to where you need to be. And then we're going to go from there. So that'll put the shifter all the way down there at the bottom. Okay, now it's already out of the car. The next step is to pull the shift linkage all the way out. And that's going to be in the engine bay. Let's make our way over. Here in the engine bay, pretty much, you got a couple ways. Well, one way of doing this. Let me get you guys all situated. Now, your shift linkage is down underneath your intake and your end box. Um, so really, I'm just gonna bend this since it's not really that expensive. So, um, right down here. Now I already have a new speed shifter, a short link, a short, I have a new speed short shifter already installed. I'm gonna swap mine back to the factory style one uh, just because I do not want that much of a short shift. I mean, these uh, these shift towers, shift, I mean, drop 40, almost 60% sh throw. So I do not want a 70% throw reduction. That's just too much. Um, Again, it's your guys' choice, but that's what I'm going to do. Um, so the next step here is to remove your linkage. Now, I'm going to be doing something a little different. Um, I don't know yet if this is going to work or not. So I'm removing the linkage. I'm not going to change its orientation right now uh, or its uh, length. I'm going to unbolt the three uh, bolts here that hold the entire assembly in one place and see if I can leave this alone so I don't have to do adjustments on my um, uh, on my actual uh, shifter so I can just make it as bolt on as possible um, and we'll see. I mean it might be successful, it might not, but I'm going to give it a try. Now with the shift linkage unbolted, uh, next step is trying to fish it down below and out of the car uh, from underneath. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, just yank that sucker out, just be careful, you don't want to damage anything on, on its way out, but that's, I mean, honestly, it's, that's pretty much it. There's not much crazy stuff um, holding it in place. Um, so we got that going, we're going to pull the box out and then we're going to show you guys what to do next. Now with the shift box removed, we need to open it. Now these, these little aluminum tabs all around the box. You have to bend them open. They have a rubber grommet on them as well. I'm going to grab my bigger flathead. Be right back. Okay. Now the reason why we have to take this apart is because there's a couple little things we need to remove to get to the um, the important part, like uh, for the end of the shift linkage. Um, it's only accessible through the to the bottom so you gotta pry these all off now depending on how much this matters to you be careful on how much you bend this because I mean shift boxes are pretty valuable 
Uh, a lot of people doing swaps in their in their cars. Uh, these you need you need to keep these. If you guys are gonna be doing like a Mark IV swap, I mean a 1.8T swap and a Mark II, you need to keep this this box because they got valuable parts in them. down here now you can see how much my uh, shift box is uh, <laughs> degraded over its lifetime actually I don't even have the bushing that goes in here Wow that's shot out <laughs> see I have to get a whole diesel geek and get this stuff for uh, service so what I'm doing here taking out these little clips I hold these in place and then down here underneath this box is these little u-shaped clips here that hold the the cable in place okay only one I have a problem with right now is this guy you should be able to pry it right there just like that and that's how it pops right out now you save that this is what matters uh, the entire setup here um, but the problem is I lost the uh, the bushing that goes inside here is completely destroyed it is no longer existent impressive I'm actually I'm, imp I'm actually impressed with that I don't have it um, so I'm hoping I can figure out how to make it work <laughs> we'll see all right so now we're here working on the actual box now from Cooler Works. And so now we gotta unbolt the three bolts underneath it. There's the big one and the small one. The small, small one is your reverse. The big one's all your shifting. Okay? So, you're gonna insert, like you were just doing it before. Okay. It's be a little bit more tricky to get that clip in there. So this clip um, is a little different. I mean, it's not different, but it's gonna be trickier for you guys to install it because there's a lip here. So this has to go in kind of sideways. Did the trick so so right down here in the same way that we did it before um, that clip has to go in kind of at an angle sideways um, but yeah should solve the problem okay now what's gonna be a little trickier is getting this guy in here this one is the same as before but it doesn't have the um, um, the, the little clip facing the right direction is facing the opposite direction so it's gonna be a little bit tighter fit for this guy right here okay does it even fit let's see here Gonna have to unbolt it. 
put it on and then do it again. Interesting. Hmm. I have to be right back. I have to figure this out in just a moment. <clears throat> All right, guys. So easy fix. I uh, just need to get a vice grips and a rag to hold this piece right here that spins oh so freely. Um, once you unbolt it, it goes right on. Um, nothing crazy difficult. And the next step is to kind of line that back up. And the manufacturer does suggest to put some Loctite on the threads, which I'm going to do after I get everything else situated. It won't take me that long to do it. I just wanted to see um, what I needed to do to get it going. Um, so yeah. There we go, you can see there's that reverse. Or left, or the, no, the shifting to going different. <laughs> Yeah, you guys know what I mean. <laughs> so now we're gonna just repeat the process. Put this clip in here. Now I'm gonna have some slop, unfortunately. I'm gonna need to order some new bushings from Diesel Geek. Uh, these bushings are just on their way out. Um, so Diesel Geek, if you're watching, I'm gonna be hitting you guys up soon for some extra parts. Uh, if you guys watch my Diesel Geek video uh, for my all the bushing upgrade, it's not that hard. Um, it's just very tedious, so yeah, man. But yeah, Diesel Geek is definitely the place to go for upgrading your shifter box uh, bushings here. I don't think you can get them anywhere else. I think they got the marker cornered for that. Oh. Cables installed. Now to seal the box back up. Uh, so they provided all new hardware for that. Well, a bunch of new, a bunch of hardware. To seal the box back up. Work your way around it. Again, I'm always that guy that puts everything by hand, so gotta start at least two to three threads.
or just neglect what I just said and a little bit more tedious than I would like. what I'm doing right now. I'm doing the bottom of the box. Just what's left. I'm gonna give you a ton of screws. And for good reason, you gotta make sure this is like watertight, I guess. We're gonna fill up to make my life a little bit easier. Now the reason why I upgraded to this box, two reasons, I'm getting ready for my car to get outside of the uh, stance world and get into racing. So 2022 is going to be the year of a lot of racing. We're going to have the VR6 Jetta boosted, the Mark IV GTI, we're going to be swapping out the turbo one more time on the GTI to something a little bit different. Uh, with a little bit better power band uh, on the lower end on the lower rpms versus up high so we got a lot of cool stuff i'm gonna get rid of the bags and go full coilovers so that's gonna be a pretty fun build obviously the the gti i'm mean, not the gti the outlander is going to be getting its upgrade as well so yeah next year is going to be a big year for us I know I keep saying that every year, but I mean, with my new job, a decent uh, decent source of income finally coming into my household, I'm actually going to be able to say that with proudly and and um, you know, for legitimately, you know, I'm, I can actually say that because I have finally a real income coming in. <laughs> you know, a lot of my content comes out of my pocket so you know I can only do what I can afford I was actually able to afford this so I did it <laughs> so the box is all screwed out so now uh, it's time to go put this back in but before you go and rush and do that there's a couple things you need to go and do ahead of time since underneath the car there's two mounting holes for it um, there's actually one, two here that go up top of how we remove the box, but there's two more down right here, and this doesn't have the bracket. So, guys at Cool Works thought of that already, and they supplied a bracket for you. So, let's get that going. 
this bracket here is what's going to mount it pretty much to your uh, underneath the car pretty much So what you want to do is line it up as best you can, nice and snug. So these two and these two nuts are for the front. They supplied an extra two more bolts and nuts but you can't use those because there you already have studs underneath the car so these are no no longer needed for your install they provide additional hardware for other stuff uh, but in this scenario it's not needed all right everyone and we're back so <laughs> gonna explain to you what we had to do not hard uh, I actually had Ray Ray show up there he is right over there he gave me actually a helping hand here so there's some things that are going to be a little difficult because obviously I couldn't show you doing it while I was in the, pro in the process of doing it because I had to figure it out. But we have figured it out and you guys can see right here it is officially installed. Now, um, what you have to do prior to installing this, um, the instructions won't specify this. Uh, I, I believe it's going to be kind of like a case by case scenario. Uh, so in my scenario, it's a little bit more different than others. Again, not their fault. It's it's a it's pretty much again per scenario. So first thing you want to do is remove the uh, this linkage right here. So unbolt this guy first before you do anything. Once you do that, you're gonna uh, grind down. I had to do on mine. I had to grind a little corner. You see that right there? I had to grind out about a millimeter per side. Right there. Uh, and the, it's the part that curves only that I grind it out that allow the box to pretty much go all the way up and sit flush uh, correctly now because of that let's go down below now these are the two things you're gonna need to watch out for uh, because that's it that's honestly all you have to pay attention to when you do this <clears throat> go all the way down here now over here you guys can see that it's hard to see but um, the two bolts that hold the uh, the box here, uh, this corner I had to grind the corner down because uh, the bolts that hold the bracket, this metal bracket right here, um, get in the way. So grinding it down allowed me to slide the box correctly and bolt everything down again correctly. Pretty straightforward. Um, now, one thing I will give you guys as a tip uh, was do not disconnect the other side of your end links only this side when you replace the box uh, that solved a lot of time for me during this install actually saved a lot of time because I didn't have to adjust anything well a little bit of adjusting but nothing drastic so what I ended up doing um, since I didn't disconnect the actual end links themselves um, these guys here these were not disconnected or adjusted. I left them alone and just pulled everything out along the way. And that allowed me, number one, to bolt it back into place, put it on, and the distances were correct. Nothing had to be readjusted. However, since I have a short throw shifter here from New Speed, I gotta pull that out. I mean, my shifts are ridiculous. Um, they're way too short. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. So we're here in neutral. I'm gonna go over to first. That's it. Third, fourth, fifth. And then pull up, locking out, and reverse. It's pretty easy to do. Now I'm going to show you guys a, a tip that me and Ray kind of figured out along the way. 
He's over there being beautiful. Look at him. Look at him. Just mm, so pretty. Um, so while Ray's in there checking that the gears are going in and we're shifting, um, these little bolts here that they provide you, they provide you like a little batch of these little bolts. You see these right here? These little bolts right here have an adjustment. Uh, this is what allows you to prevent you to go too far on your on your shift. So that way you don't um, go into the wrong gear uh, for first and reverse, especially. Um, that's why you got to make sure you have your buddy with you to get you in there. That's first. And then see right here, if I pull this up, that'll get me into reverse. That's the lockout. These guys have to be set up correctly. If not, your lockout will not work correctly. So, but they're super simple. Uh, you need an Allen wrench and a little tiny, little tiny wrench here to tighten these guys down. We haven't tightened them down yet, but that's where we're at. And then down here, this arm. Now this arm is what's gonna give you your, uh, your up and down movement, up and down movement for reverse and I believe fifth. Uh, so you got to make sure you keep this adjusted correctly. So again, with the buddy, checking out your engine bay, knowing what first, second, third, fourth, and fifth is at, and reverse, they'll give you the right information. Uh, Ray got me all tuned in. So now we're set correctly. So we're going to put these little nuts here and lock them correctly down. You lock them in place. I gotta fix that. <laughs> Not supposed to be moving. Gotta lock these in place, and that way they don't ever move again. That way your gears are gonna be in the right spot as well. Once you do that, put everything back together and go give your car a quick test drive. So we're gonna show you guys that in a little bit, and we're gonna see how it works out. All right. What needed to be done when I went out for a test drive? Super, super simple. Um, so what was the issue is that I couldn't get into second just by getting by sitting but if I had it in first and then I went to second it would be fine um, and the issue was is that the distance um, going from left to right in neutral was too far so all I had to do is set the adjustment screw here a little bit further in so that prevented me from going too far you see that right there this screw right here is what prevented me from going too far. Once it went, once I got to where I needed it, hold on, oh, wrong. I'm inside a gear. Okay, here, second gear, just like that. Fourth, third, first, and then fifth, and then reverse, just like that. So you guys can see again, first. Second, third, fourth, fifth, done. And the throw with the new speed short shifter and this, I could say it's almost about 50 to 60% shorter than stock, maybe even 70%. It's pretty gnarly, the, the, sh the distance between the shifting. I'm kind of liking it. Um, I feel like I can get into gear faster and have a little bit more boost uh, per gears while as I'm shifting because I can shift faster and get into gears a lot quicker. Uh, definitely again enjoying this uh, new mod in our engine bay. I mean not engine bay in my <laughs> inside my interior. It just it it feels freaking solid. This is definitely a much much more solid shifter than the factory box. Um, again it's nice and oh the clunkiness is just there it just feels so good and reverse so the next thing i'm going to design uh is a pretty much a a, a dress piece uh, it's something a beauty plate that's going to go here so i don't know yet if i'm going to do that or just build my custom uh aluminum center um, center console i haven't decided yet but right now my idea would be to put a plate here Go all the way across and kind of bend it here so I can have a nice cover and then go all the way, uh, whatever's left over, all the way across so I can uh, 
have an aesthetic you know just a really nice clean plate and just just for display not for display but for my um oh i'm losing my train of thought right now guys sorry uh, for my v2 controller and for my uh, cigarette lighter all right there just to have those back because those are on the floor right now not doing anything so um, that's it uh, I didn't have to do any adjustments in the engine bay because I took everything off as one piece which made the install legitimately night and day in simplicity I was able to take a quick test drive and drive it and it went really really well um, so I'm very very happy with that I'm going to see how am I going to give you guys, actually, a, uh, you know what, let's go take you guys out for a test drive. Give me a minute here. I'll be right back. <laughs> 